So basically what a unit circle is, it's a circle with a radius of one unit. So you can see if you go to the right or up or left or down, you can see how it's always like one. Okay, so the radius is one. And the key to really being good at the unit circle is knowing your 30, 60, 90 triangle and your 45, 45, 90 triangle. If you know those two, you've got it. So the 30 degree angle is right here. And to get to this point here, you're going right square root three over two, up a half, okay? And with the 60 degree angle, it's reversed. You're going right a half, up square root three over two. These are right triangles here, okay? And then at the 45, this point here on the circle is square root two over two, square root two over two. So what we're gonna talk about real quickly is about reference angles, and that'll make everything a little bit easier. So let me see if I can show you. So what, are, what is a reference angle? Well, when we're dealing with these angles, we deal with the angle in standard position like this. It's like a spinner, like say this is like an arrow on a, on a board game, right? And you, you spin it like this. It's gonna spin around, okay, either direction, as many times as, as it does, and wherever it ends up, it's gonna end up in the first, second, third, or fourth quadrants, right? Wherever it ends up though, what you wanna do is you wanna drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, okay? So wherever that spinner goes, you always wanna drop a perpendicular, a right angle, okay, to the, to the x-axis, and the angle that's formed between the terminal ray and the x-axis is called a reference angle. It's always gonna be positive, it's always gonna be between zero and 90 degrees, or zero and pi over two if you're uh, working in radians. So what you wanna do is you wanna find out what that angle is, and then we're gonna refer back to the 30, 45, and 60 degree points on the circle here in the first quadrant that we've already memorized. So let me show you what I mean. So let's say, for example, we wanna find out what is the sine of 210 degrees. Well, the first thing I would do is I would say, all right, I'm starting over here, I'm rotating, 90, 180, and then 30 more. So 210 degrees would put us right there, okay? I'm gonna drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, and I notice that this angle is 30 degrees, because we started here, 180 plus 30 more. So now when we're working with the unit circle, if we wanna find the coordinates of this point, we refer back to our 30 degree angle, square root three over two, one half. So that's gonna be the coordinate of uh, this point right here, square root three over two, one half. But since you're in the third quadrant, you're going left and down, right? So both of these coordinates are gonna be negative. But you notice that the coordinates are the same. So as long as you know these three, you've got it. Now, the next part of the unit circle is how do you find the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of these common multiples of these angles? Well, what you wanna know is you wanna know that the sine, okay, is always gonna be the y coordinate, the cosine, is always gonna be the x coordinate, and then the tangent is gonna be the y divided by the x, okay? And the reason that works is because, see this angle here, theta? See, this is like a triangle right here. So we've got x, we've got y, and we've got one. If you find the sine, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but anything divided by one is itself. So that's why it works out to just be sine is the y. Same thing with cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, but again, anything divided by one is itself. And then tangent, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we get y over x, our y coordinate divided by our x coordinate. So to finish this problem, what's the sine of 210? That's the y value, that's just gonna be negative 1 half. Okay, now you're probably saying, well, what about radians, Mario, right? How do I work with radians? Well, let's do one in radians. So say we wanna find out, uh, let's just go over here, we'll say the cosine of five pi over six. Okay, now you can do this a couple different ways. What I notice some students do and some teachers uh, uh, promote is to think about these as the pi over six family, the pi over four family, and the pi over three family. And then what you can do is think about multiples of that family. So here I can see I've got pi over six. That's a 30 degree angle. It's a pi over six family. Five times 30 is 150. So I've just done a quick uh, conversion into degrees. And I know 150 degrees is gonna be right about there because we're starting here and we're going this direction for positive angles. And then we're gonna just drop a perpendicular and we notice that that reference angle is 30 again. So I say, oh, okay, I know my 30 degree you know, reference angle. I go back to the first quadrant and I say, okay, I know the coordinates. It's gonna be square root three over two, one half, but the x coordinate's gonna be negative because I'm going left, which is negative, up, which is positive, right? And then since we're trying to find the cosine, we say, okay, I want the x coordinate and that's gonna be negative square root three over two. Now, as you work through these problems, you're probably gonna end up memorizing all of these common angles 
<clears throat> and excuse me, in the coordinates on the unit circle just naturally. But in the beginning, what you can do is you can use the aid of reference angles to help you to find out you know, the trig value at any point on that circle. Okay, let's do a couple more examples and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So say we were trying to find out the cosine of, let's do a negative angle this time. Say it's the cosine of, uh, let's say it's a negative two pi divided by three. Okay, so when we're working with a negative angle, which direction do we go? Do we go this way or do we go this way? Well, negative angles, we're gonna go this direction, okay, clockwise. So what we're gonna do, you'll notice I draw a lot of these little circles and you might wanna do the same thing too in the beginning. Um, so I would draw the initial ray here and then two pi over three. Now there's a couple different ways to look at this. One way to look at it is we're going two thirds of pi. Pi radians is 180 degrees. We're going two thirds of that distance. So we're gonna be right about there. Okay, that's about two thirds. If we drop a perpendicular, we say how many more radians does it take to get from here back to the x-axis? Well, you could see it's gonna be one third because that would add up to pi, right? So this is gonna be uh, pi over three for our reference angle. And we know the pi over three family is the 60 degree angle, one half square root three over two. So that's gonna be uh, one half square root three over two. Okay, one half square root three over two. And these are both gonna be negative because you're in the third quadrant, you're going left and down. Now we wanted to find the cosine, so that's gonna be the x coordinate, so it's just gonna equal negative one half. So let's take a look at one more example. If you're preparing for the ACT, I just wanted to make a quick mention that I do have a video course available for that. And I'll have a link for that uh, you know, in the upper corner here that you can check out if you're interested. But let's do a couple more examples on the unit circle and then we'll uh, wrap up this video. So let's say we wanted to find the tangent this time. We haven't talked about tangent. Let's do tangent of, how about 315 degrees? All right, so let's go over here. Tangent of 315. Okay, so where is 315 degrees on our circle? Well, we start here, and we're going 90, 180, 270, 315. I'm gonna drop a perpendicular to the x-axis, and that reference angle is 45 degrees, okay? And we just have to refer back to our 45 degree coordinate, right over here, square root two over two. So I'm just gonna write that down, root two over two, root two over two, but the y coordinate's negative because we're going down, the x is positive because we're going to the right, we're in the fourth quadrant here. And remember, tangent is the y coordinate divided by the x coordinate. So anything divided by itself is one, but a negative divided by a positive is gonna be negative one, so this comes out to negative one. So I hope this helped you understand the unit circle better. If you want, just a couple other quick tips before we close is that you could think of these points, you could reflect them over the y-axis, then reflect them over the x-axis, and reflect them over this way again. That's another way to you know, calculate all the different points on the unit circle. Some students like to do it that way. But I like using reference angles. Uh, eventually, you'll just memorize them all because you'll uh, do them so often. But this is a good way to start. So subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll see you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.